my name is Kelly Dell with Off the Beaded Path Beadstore.com. Thanks so much for joining me today for part one of a three part video series that I'm going to be doing over the next six weeks with you guys. So, we did the Kaleida cycle earlier in the year. People really loved it, but they wanted more three dimensional stuff. So, my friend Elaine was working on an ornament and she said, Kelly, I really wish you could do a video on this project. It's a free pattern. So, I reached out to the designer of the Screaming Squirrel <laughs> and asked her, hey, can I teach this? And she said, yes, absolutely. So, the first thing that you want to do, you want to go to the link in the description box to download the free pattern for this beautiful winged star Christmas ornament. So this came out in 2020 on the designer's website and it was a free pattern then and it's still now. So you can go over there to grab that pattern. The really cool thing about this I'm going to use a lot of my leftover Delica beads, okay? Um, this uses three, we're, we're going to be doing it in three parts. Part one, we're going to learn how to make a casting pod. What is a casting pod, you say? Well, it is these little guys right here. It sort of looks like an anemone. Uh, it's very funky. And you go, what am I going to do with that? What you will see, because we are going to build our whole ornament off of a casting pod. So there's lots of things that we need to talk about with our little pod. So the first thing that we need to make our pod is we need some size 8 seed beads, and I'm going to be using three colors of a size 11 Delica bead. You're going to need a softer thread like your 1G, your KO, things like that, because you want this to have a nice springy feel to it. So that is what we want for today is some size 8 seed beads and three colors of size 11 Delica beads. Those Delicas need to be very different from the colors you're going to use in your ornament so you'll know where you started and stopped, basically. Um, you can see here that you can do patterns with this. I'm going to keep it really simple. I'm going to do this middle one here where it's just every row or every couple of rows is a different color. Um, so you can use up extra Delicas. The design Honor says that this is going to use about 20 grams of Delica beads plus uh, 20 size 11 or size 15 seed beads. So I'm excited. I can't wait to walk you guys through making this project. So today is the pod. You'll have two weeks to get that pod made. And then in two weeks, I'm going to show you how we start this on our pod. And then two weeks later, I'm going to show you how we take it off the pod and actually finish it out. So I'm super excited to do this with you guys. I hope you are excited. And I cannot wait to see all these beautiful winged uh, star Christmas ornaments. So make sure again to go down to the link below to grab the free pattern. And there's also going to be a direct link to the Contemporary Geometric Beadwork page. Because Kate McKinnon and uh, I think Julia Pareto, Peretti, I think, um, did a video as well on how to do this casting pod. So I am going to link that as well so you guys can watch that. So let's go ahead and let's talk about our casting pod and um, why we need what we need. All right, so if you look at page one of the pattern, it said it begins with the reusable casting pod, which we're doing today. It says your pod needs to have a total number of points that is divisible by four. So 20 points, 10 up and 10 down, will yield a star with 10 wings. 24 points, which is 12 up and 12 down, will yield 12 wings. And you will notice that the pod only needs minimal rows. So this is, again, the pods that she's showing you as an example. So what does that mean exactly? Well, the first thing, if you've never made the pod bead, what you need to do is you need to head over to the Contemporary Geometric Beadwork.com and there is a free graph on or instructions on the podcast bead, how to make the podcast bead. Okay, and that is the instructions that we are going to go by today. Now, this is a 12 point. We are on, we are going to need to make, she said, <clears throat> 
we, it needs to be divisible by four. So you can see here, this is one that I made um, yesterday. It has, I'm gonna put my, my little needle right here so we know which one we started and stopped with. But it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It has 10 points up and 10 points down. So if you hold it like this, I've got 10 green points and 10 purple points. This tells me that I have to have 20 size eight seed beads. Now I have another pod here. This is a pod that I made while I was at the Contemporary Geometric Beadwork Retreat. And um, this pod um, has 12, I believe. Let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Yeah, this pod has 12 points up and 12 points down. Now, I could not for my life understand how I was gonna put this on here, do my beadwork on it, and take it off. So I had done just, just very minimal rows so I could see how this come off. So this actually came off of this pod without losing any beads whatsoever. It's a very, very cool um, thing. Now, the more rows you do, the tighter this gets together. So if I would have kept going with my rows, this would not be huge like this. It would be a lot smaller. So that is basically what we're gonna be doing off of this pod. So here we go. To get started, we have to have 10 points up, 10 points down. So it tells me we need 20 beads. So I'm going to be using my size 8 seed beads. I've got my thread. Um, you can start with it like a yard and a half to two yards of your favorite thread. I actually had a big cone of blue Namo. So I'm using this blue Namo today. So one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay. Even though I just sat there and read that out loud, I'm still going to double check that I have twenty beads. Two, four, six, eight. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Yes, so I have those 20 beads. So I'm gonna bring these down. I'm gonna leave myself just a short tail thread just so I can kind of hang on to it. I'm gonna come through all of these beads again. All 20 beads. Now I'm going to tie these two threads together. And then I'm going to go through them all again. Give my thread a little tug here so that it pulls that knot in a little bit more. Now, this is just me because I have seen so many people make this mistake. I'm going to go ahead and put a needle onto that tail thread, that short tail thread, and I'm going to run it through some beads before I trim that tail thread off. If you just cut it, you might pull the whole thing apart. So, now we have what they call the center ring. Okay, so this is what we have right here. Now, it says square stitch. Square stitch two increase beads onto each round bead in the ring. Alternate increases with B and C, that's two colors of your size 11 Delica, and nudge the beads to sit with six points up and six points down. Okay, so here's the deal. If you have never done square stitch before, this is not hard. This is very, very easy, actually. So I'm going to start out with my purple. I am coming out of this bead right here. So I pick up two purple, and I'm going to come back through the same bead I'm coming out of, and then the very next bead. So this is the bead I'm exiting. I come out of that bead, and then the very next bead. And so two beads 
sit just like that. Now we're gonna alternate our colors. So I've got purple here, so now I'm gonna pick up two green. I'm gonna come back through the bead my thread is coming out of and the very next bead. So this one and this one. So now I have two purple and two green. And what I, in a lovely world, we want them to go like this. Now I'm back to purple. So I'm gonna pick up two purple. I'm gonna come back through the bead that I'm coming out of to make a circle and the very next bead. So again, now I have two purple beads. So you right now, you don't have to worry too much about making them lay where they want to because when we go to add our next section, it will straighten all that out. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now I'm back to the green. So I'm gonna pick up two green. I'm gonna take the needle and come back through the bead I'm coming out of and the very next bead. So I'm going to continue working in this, um, you know, alternating fashion of two purple and two blue until I have gone all the way around my piece. So once you've gone all the way around, this is what your piece will look like. The main thing is you wanna count and make sure you have 10 sets of each color of bead. So at this point, my thread is exiting these two green beads right here were the last two beads I added. So I came through those, you know, the bead and the very next bead. So then I'm coming out at my purple beads. These are the two purple beads that I started with. So to get started, we want to do a step up. So that simply means I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna go up through the bead, the purple bead, right above where my thread is exiting. Okay. I like to hold and work around this direction. So what I'm gonna do, <clears throat> I'm gonna pick up two purple, and I'm gonna come down through the very next purple bead. And if you want to, you can put your fingers there to keep everything tight as you work. Okay, so I have two purple. Now we introduce our next color bead. So this is an orange and I'm gonna take the orange and I'm gonna come down through the first green bead that I have because my green beads are gonna be down like this. So I'm going to come through the green bead just like this and pull it through, and voila. Now we pick up two green beads, and I'm gonna come up through the green bead right next to where my thread is exiting. And again, I'm just gonna kinda put my finger there. So now it looks like that. So again, we're gonna pick up our next color bead and I'm gonna go right up through the purple directly above where my thread is exiting. And we have our first little V shape there. So when you come to the top, it's always two purple and I come down through the very next purple bead right next to where my thread's exiting. Just gonna put my finger there to hold everything together. Just make sure they straighten up. Okay, now I'm gonna t push these green down. I pick up one orange bead and I'm gonna come down through the green bead right below where my thread's exiting. And then I'm gonna pick up two green and take my needle and come through the green right next to where my thread's exiting. Pick up an orange and 
I'm going to take these purple, purples go at the top. So I'm gonna take my purple, push it up and go right up through the first purple bead there. And then two purple, come down through the very next purple. Just gonna put my finger there again. This just helps so that things just don't fly and go wherever they want to go. You just kind of keep them there. And then I pick up one orange. I'm gonna take the green, make sure the green is down. And I'm gonna come down through the green right where my thread's exiting. And then one last time showing you here, I'm gonna pick up two of my green and I'm gonna go up through the very next green. So I'm gonna do this all the way around so that I have new little V's when I get all the way back to the start. As you can see here, I've gone all the way around now with my little V's and I am getting ready to add my last little orange bead here. So when I add this last bead, <clears throat> I have to basically go through the two purple beads that I have. So I have to go through the last bead of the row, which is that first purple bead. And then I have to step up by going through the next bead or the first purple bead in this row that we just added. So again, when I add the last little orange bead here, I have to step up and go through the two purple beads there so that now everything is even. So we're going to continue now to work herringbone increases and do a little bit of peyote here. So for this next row, I'm going to pick up two purple and I'm going to come down through the very next purple bead. It's just that top bead there, not the stack, just the top bead. So I come through that. Now we're going to work peyote. So I pick up an orange and I go through an orange. And then I pick up an orange and I'm gonna go through the bottom green here. So it's just like peyote, skip a bead and go through a bead. So it looks just like this from a side view now and this from a front view. So I'm to the green, so I pick up two green and I come up through one green, which is just that very next green bead there Straighten it up. And then I pick up an orange and go through an orange. And then we pick up an orange and I'm gonna go through the top purple bead. So again, just like regular peyote, skip a bead, go through a bead. Okay, I'm gonna show you that one more time. So it's two purple. And I come down through the very next purple bead. And then I'm going to pick up an orange and go through an orange. And then pick up an orange and go through the bottom green here because it's skip a bead, go through a bead. And then I'm ready for the green. So it's two green. And I come through the very next green. And then pick up an orange and go through an orange. And pick up an orange and go through that top purple bead. And I'm going to work this now all the way around. This is what it looks like once you've gone all the way around. I'm to the last little point here where I've just added my two green. So I add my orange. And now when I add the second of those orange beads, I have to finish and do the step up, which means that I have to go through the top two purple beads. So I'm not going through just the top bead. I have to finish the row and then go 
through the first bead of the new row. So you can see there that I'm going through those two beads so that everything is even and looks correct. And now this is the pod we have so far. Now we have to keep going. We still have to do one more row because our pod needs, if you see here, my orange beads, I have one, two, three beads sticking up. So we still have to do one more row on our pod. So we're gonna start it out the same way. I've got my two purple beads and I'm gonna come right down through the very next purple. Then I pick up an orange, go through an orange. Pick up an orange, go through an orange. And then I pick up an orange and I come down through the green. So I am peyoteing three orange beads down that row. Now I've got two green beads and I come up through the very next green bead. And now we work back up. So it's orange, go through the orange. Orange and go through. And then orange and go through the top purple. So now you can see I have a very uh, deep V here now, a much deeper V. So I'm gonna continue to work all the way around doing exactly like I just showed. So once you finish the row, this is what your piece should look like. You should have three little orange beads sticking up as you go through. And so I'm right here, I'm gonna add my last orange bead. So when I add this last bead, remember, skip one, go through one would be this bead right here. So I have to go through both of these beads to finish out the pod. So this essentially our pod is complete. But if you look at the pattern, it says, Bead the podcast as tall as you like, and then, unless you are a tight beater, gently reinforce the edge by passing through once with your needle and thread. So, what this means is, unless you are a very tight beater, you are going to take your needle and you're going to pass through basically all the beads on this last row. So, you're going to have to go through the lower beads and the upper beads all the way around. Now, if you say, how do I tell? How, how will I know when I get back? Well, you could always just make you a little mark on a little piece of paper as to how many points you've done or just keep going until you think you've got it. But you're just gonna go through and reinforce. Now, me, I am a very tight beater, so I don't need that reinforcement. But if you are a loose beater, Make sure to go back and reinforce the edges. We're not putting any beads in. We're just going through and reinforcing. This is also a great way. Your reinforcement is also a great way just to weave the thread through and be done with that thread. You can just trim it off because uh, we don't want to put any knots in here. If we put any knots anywhere we put them, you know, you're going to see them. So just do whichever one you prefer so that when you finish, you have your pod and you will be ready to start the ornament on the pod. So friends, I hope that you had an easy time making your pod cast bead. You've got two weeks to get this done and then we get to start our beautiful winged star ornament off of this little podcast bead. So I do want to thank uh, Joy Davison of the Screaming Squirrel uh, for letting me do this project for you guys. And I also want to thank uh, Kate McKinnon and Julia Prettle for all of their beautiful podcast instructions and video designs for that. So gather all of your delicas, all of your stash of delicas.
uh, and get those ready for our ornament, which we will start in two weeks from today. You guys have a wonderful week and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. <music>